There are lots of old bikes out there. This one's mine. It's got a Harley four-speed kicker transmission. All of those leak, right? <laughs> Mine's been leaking for years, and I've just been filling it up. Uh, but the last time I looked, it dropped almost an ounce of transmission fluid on the floor. So let's fix this. My name's Ian Landsman. Usually my videos are me riding on the bike, talking about whatever I want. If you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. But there are a lot of good videos out there showing uh, gray beards mucking around with this sort of thing. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to show you the removal of the seals. Two seals and a spacer. I'm going to show you putting those two seals and a spacer back. The spacer I'm going to use is a special part from a gray beard in Canada that stops leaks. It's better than factory apparently. And that's it. Let's keep this video real short. How to get the bigger seal out. What you want to do is use a punch like this, tap in, and then you want to drill into it so that you can get a screw or a pick in and slowly pry it out. You just have to work it. You want to be careful not to put marks here. You can get between the metal bit here and the seal because you're going to be replacing that metal bit likely. This though, that's important. Don't be putting your tool between there. Now the gold colored part is metal. So you can kind of work something in there. This seal, man, it's a beer. I've been trying lots of different things, uh, but I've only been able to make progress with this. <laughs> this video is probably a cautionary tale. This is used to open um, paint cans. Make sure not to pry on the thin wall. Pry on the thick wall where the threads are. But you can pretty easily get the paint can opener in there and then make some slight progress on this seal. And there she comes. So, unlikely tool, but a paint can opener got her out. It's ultimately really important to put some gasket maker in there. I've seen people use the black permatex. I've also seen people use the red high temp silicone permatex. But um, I figure better with oil resistant than with high temp. There's a special tool they make, Jim's. It screws onto here and then there's a sleeve that pushes on to evenly put the uh, seal in place. Um, and this is, um, you're not going to be able to get on without some sort of special tool. But you know what's also a special tool? One inch PVC, which fits right over and has very little play. So I'm going to be able to put uh, adequate force in all directions with a hammer on the seal without any problem using a $3 tool instead of an $80 tool. So let's go ahead and put some Permatex black sealer on here and hammer it in. Remember kids, less is more here. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that the seal is hammered in at a uniform depth. And I can see I don't quite have it yet. I've got to keep going with the PVC here. Alright, you can see I'm wearing a different shirt. Every time I've come out here to uh, work on the bike, it's been a different day. This time I've been waiting for this part to come in. Now I've heard about this part. I could find a lot of information. I'm going to give you all the information on screen now. But uh, there's two places you could buy this a website on the UK. I'm not going to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you about the guy on eBay in Canada that sells these. And there's four different kinds. So you have to remove the spacer from your transmission, measure it, and then tell him which of the four you need. And then he will send it to you. And how this spacer is different than the one that was originally in it it has an o-ring on the inside so instead of stuffing stuffing silicone 
into these sections to prevent oil from coming out, uh, there's an O-ring that runs on fourth gear and the spacer is locked to fourth gear so no oil gets past the O-ring. So the shirt I'm wearing today, this is Hef 520, he's a moto vlogger and he sent me this shirt and uh, the community is really great. If you're watching my video and thinking, hey I could do a better job than this a-hole, <laughs> then I encourage you to start making videos and it's very rewarding. People in the community uh, really come and support you. I've sent this guy um, a picture of my bike, Kickstarter in it. He sent me a shirt. Pretty cool exchange there. Link below if you're interested in him. All right, the way this works, there's three components. There is a cork that goes um, and seals the back of the, the main seal. And this is not really necessary. You don't need to put the cork. A lot of people leave this out. This is uh, really a, a callback to the old days when the seal was only metal and there wasn't really any rubber there. And the cork goes on the back end to prevent oil from going on this side. Now we're going to seal this anyway uh, with some gasket maker. But I'm putting the cork because why not? It's there. There is a front and a back to this. You know if it's the front or the back because the back has a little indentation here on the edge so that the cork can kind of squish between it and the spacer. But the rollers, the needle bearings, are going to be hitting this constantly. On this side, the seal is going to be riding on here. Now a lot of guys will put uh, lithium white grease here. I'm just going to put transmission oil and I use you know Harley's formula plus. You, you can use whatever you want. A lot of people are going to argue that I'm doing the wrong thing. Uh, if you're going to let it sit on the shelf and you're not going to kick it enough to move the oil so it gets between from the back side of this uh, to where the seal meets it and rolls on it, you should probably put some white grease here. That's not a bad idea at all. I am detecting some burrs right here and I don't want that to cause a problem on my seal. A very common thing is people will install the seal on the spacer and then they'll cut the, the rubber on the uh, seal right on here. So I'm going to take my file, bring that down a little bit. I'll be right back. Alright, that looks good to me. We're going to slide it in and then we'll uh, apply some RTF sealer uh, to the outside here. So I'm going to wipe it down before I stick it on and then I'm going to use the sprocket tool once I've applied sealer to gently <laughs> finagle it in there, massage it in there. All right, the electrical tape just adds too much um, <laughs> to the thickness. I can't get the old spacer on, can't get the new spacer on. So I'm just going to oil the heck out of it and uh, get the new one on there. But there is risk of shredding the O-ring doing it this way. Wish me luck. You don't need a lot of this. It will go a long way. Do not use a metal hammer for this. Rubber mallet. Definitely keep going until it's flush with the case. It feels like it's flush with the case to me everywhere except maybe right here. You notice I'm rotating this. <laughs> it's just a wrench, don't worry about it. That's just in case the surface isn't quite even on the end. And 
she's sounding differently to me now. When you get it all the way down, um, you'll hear a difference. And it definitely feels flush now. Let's get the rest together. And since there's a crack in the frame, I'm not going to be able to ride this and tell you it doesn't leak. I'll have to come up with a jig. I think I'm going to take the nut here and put a <laughs> electric drill on it to simulate some miles. While I'm getting ready to tighten this nut, I'm remembering I want to tell you I'm using Spacer at the O-Ring, but there's another option. You can buy a nut that has a seal right here. Um, I don't know if that fixes it better, the same, if you should use both. I'm just going to reuse my nut. Maybe I don't need to use the air hammer at all. Maybe I just need to use hand tool here, because I can hold the sprocket and get it to where I think it needs to be. That seems to be all she wants to go, and uh, I don't want to hit it with the air hammer and strip out all these threads. <laughs> be sure to bend down this tab on the locking washer. All right, I might show you the uh, drill here, simulating miles, or I might just uh, tell you that it doesn't leak. But Or I'll tell you if it does leak. I'm an honest guy. But um, yeah, that's what you do. The big thing with this video is paint can opener to get that sucker out. Uh, I even saw <laughs> um, a guide online, and the guy showed... A screwdriver like this and he had already gotten the seal out he was showing that he had gotten the screwdriver between these two it's like no way dude that's not how you did it <laughs> yeah.